All right. Today, we're going to go deep into one pretty narrow topic, specifically around manure application setback maps. But before I, I sort of dive into that detail, I want to start with a big picture vision for where uh, comprehensive nutrient management plan development is going. Because really, at, at the end of the day, we want to enable partnerships between uh, growers, TSPs, ag retailers, independent crop consultants, and basically everyone who has any piece of the nutrient management puzzle that is connected to a producer and is in a trusting uh, business relationship. So uh, as you might know, the manure management planner software was developed by Purdue University since 1996. And more recently, Purdue has engaged my farms to uh, kind of uh, cultivate that uh, code base. And more recently, we've been, we've been asked to webify manure management planner, bring it to the cloud where anybody can access it at any time of the day and uh, realize really rapid uh, iterative improvements in the way the logic works. So still funded by NRCS under contract to Purdue University, uh, but, uh, but built out by my farms. I mentioned site-specific setback maps. They can be created in 38 states, all of which are in the National Manure Setback Database and is now built into the my farms uh, cloud-based environment. We also have a national standard available to all states uh, that would need to generate setback maps for use in a comprehensive nutrient management plan. And then what I'm going to show you sort of the tip of the iceberg of today is a full-on comprehensive nutrient management plan development tool set that is built out for Ohio. So the case that we're going to look at today is for planners that are based in Ohio, and we're in the process of implementing all the state-specific rules and reference data and so forth required by uh, leaders in Ohio. Uh, but additional states will be added in the future. So again, I want to I want to start by kind of planting a seed for the uh, because at a high level, we recognize that an awful lot of what we need in a nutrient management plan already exists in other systems or has been developed by other people that a farmer might already be working with. So it's not just about TSPs anymore. We want to bring soil and water conservation districts and ag retailers and independent crop consultants to pool their knowledge on behalf of the producer and create a more unified, cohesive way of thinking about this really multifaceted and fairly complex uh, nutrient management puzzle. We also want to provide one interface that a farmer or, or a TSP can use to generate everything that's required. So no more using a desktop application like MMP combined with Word, combined with Excel, combined with uh, you know, data that comes in from other applications. We're, we're building out a single unified experience where all of that data can be brought into one place. And then at the click of one button that CNMP can be generated in a, a completely digital format. So that's, that's a part of where we're, uh, where we're going here. And of course, a big part of the goal is to bring efficiency into that whole process, but to also make sure that TSPs can become trained and certified much more quickly because the tools they're using are much simpler to understand and are built specifically for ease of use and ease of understanding. So if you kind of back, uh, back out of an individual uh, feature for a second, um, this sort of outlines the handoffs that will happen and is happening now in Ohio between technical service providers that are certified by NRCS to write CNMPs. Uh, they'll start by registering the grower uh, they can then register a technical assistance provider or a TAP, and then with the grower's permission, grant the TAP access to contribute whatever pieces of the puzzle they have. So then at that point, either the TAP or the TSP can enter field boundaries. So this is a fully geo-referenced uh, workflow. They can start the nutrient management plan that needs to be created, enter crop rotation details, soil test results, which could be uploaded either in CSV format or Excel format or as shape files, because that's how they're often stored in other existing systems. They can also upload variable rate phosphorus maps that are geo-referenced. And now we've got one unified way to assess the, their compliance with the 590 standard, as well as any other nutrients that need to be documented. Then the, it goes back to the TSP who can finish the CNMP. The farmer would sign it. It would go back to the TSP for signature and then ultimately to NRCS for final approval. So that at a high level is uh, sort of the handoffs, like I said, that can happen between partners that are connected to the same producer um, uh, now and, and going forward in, in additional states. So what we're gonna focus on today specifically 
is what we call task 2.1. This is in, in the CNMP, it's section 2.1. So we decided to name the feature after where it's found in the document when it's finished. So the TSP can start this process by doing what I'm about to show you in real time. And then once that, that piece is finished, it can go over to an ag retailer or to a CCA who can upload the crop rotation or soil test results, as I mentioned. So the whole idea is that now the process of writing a CNMP can be broken off into bite-sized pieces where each actor or stakeholder can contribute what they know. And then finally, once we have uh, the crop rotation, the soil test results, now we can start to document the planned nutrient applications, including variable rate phosphorus uh, shape files, as well as every other pass across the field, including use of a planter to apply a pop-up, for example. Okay, so with that, I'm gonna jump into my farms. And what I wanna do is show you what the experience is from the very beginning to the very end of creating manure application setback maps. So I'm on the register page. I went ahead and pre-populated this with John Grower as uh, just a, a demo uh, sample. Uh, we're gonna give the farm company name Grower Farms and we'll click register. So now we just su uh, successfully created a user with the username John Grower. And now we can pull open our dashboard, go over to the grower interface. This is where all grower specific data goes in, whether it be field boundaries or feature maps, et cetera, et cetera. So let's go ahead and just type in John Grower. I'm gonna safe link now to my client. So I'm logged in as a TSP, but I'm safe linking to my client. And now I've got a brand new account that is completely empty. So I wanna start by showing you a couple of different options for importing field boundary data. We're going to start by clicking Upload Shape Files and then Add Files. And so we're going to go ahead and grab these shape files that I have. And th these came in from many different ag retailers across the state of Ohio as sample data. Now we can click on Submit because they're 100% uploaded. And what we're going to do is look at the contents of the shape file itself to automatically populate field names farm names, and operator names. So all of this data was extracted in real time from the shape files that we just uploaded. And now we can click Save. And now we have an exact replica of the field boundaries that came out of ag retail applications that are now uh, in my farms ready to be assessed for uh, compliance with the 590 standard uh, according to uh, NRCS leadership. So now the other thing I want to do while I'm here is I'm going to start a process and we'll see if we have time a little bit later to take a look at this, because in addition to uploading shape files, uh, another option is to fetch my field view data. So I'm going to go ahead and say, yep, I want to bring my field boundaries in from climate field view. We can do the same thing with the John Deere Operations Center. And uh, I'm actually going to fetch data in from our family farm. I'm going to give field view permission to share that data with my farms. And in a little while, we're gonna see this uh, message update. It'll tell us that we've finished uploading the data. And then when it, like I said, if we have time at the end, we'll go ahead and process, uh, process them, uh, them the rest of the way. Okay, and now it's finished. So we'll, we'll see if we have time to come back to that. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a CNMP on the nutrient management planning page in my farms. I'm gonna give it a starting month of January and then click Start New Plan. Now, as I mentioned, the entire CNMP is now built out for use in the state of Ohio. But what I'm gonna do is really just concentrate on this task, 2.1. And so, as I mentioned, the TSP can start this process, um, but notice that there are some uh, tasks, for example, crops and soil test results that are disabled until I complete a prerequisite. So I, I have to tell the system which fields we're looking at before we can document any information about those fields, of course. So this is this allows me to include as many field boundaries as I want to. These are the six or seven that uh, I just imported in shapefile format that are also in the state of Ohio. And so I'm going to click on the arrow to automatically select every field that I have in the state of Ohio. Now, we assume by default that they're all going to receive manure, but I'm not planning to handle every one of them just in the interest of time. Instead, I'm going to just click Add Map. Now, in the past, when we if you've created setback maps in the past, typically 
you have to create a different geometry for every feature type and manure application method combination. What we've decided to do is break those two concepts apart. So we start by adding features, which tend to be permanent. These are things that do not change much over time. And so I noticed that I've got a, res uh, a residence east of the field. So I'm just going to go over here and document the presence of a residence. That was the feature type that I had just selected. Uh, and again, the features that are available are uh, they're an exact match for what the National Manure Setback Database, uh, data database says. So um, everything that is uh, available, for example, in GNT is also available uh, right here. So then I'm just going to uh, grab this end of the field as well, and we'll see uh, that we're going to put a setback according to NRCS requirements on both ends of this field. So then the other one I want to do, because it has a grassed waterway, is the Lugan Bull Farm. So we'll go ahead and create one more. It's a water control structure. And we've got a waterway right down the middle of the field. And then to finish this line, I'm just going to click the last point twice. I think I'll do just one more. And this time we're just going to drop a pin where a private drinking water well is. There we go. Okay, so now for the rest of these farms, again, just in the interest of time, I'm going to set them to no. Otherwise, the system will require... That we, that we create a feature map for every farm that's going to receive manure. So now for every field that has a feature map, we're gonna see those farms um, listed on step three. And now we have to tell the system how we're applying manure. So again, we're separating those two topics. And for this first farm, we're going to indicate we're using, you know, we're, we're applying on frozen ground, which of course is not a best practice, but now the user can easily see that Applications on frozen ground require a 200-foot setback, and now we can see that's going to take 2.3 acres out of my application operations. So if I were to select not on frozen ground, we can see that that's a, a major reduction in the area that we cannot spread. So the whole goal here is to help uh, users really consider the impact of their management decisions on their ability to spread manure across the, the maximum area possible. Also, these application methods are tied to a year. Remember, it's a three-year plan. So everything I'm doing applies to the year 2024, and I could uh, document different application methods for 2025 and 2026, respectively. So let's go ahead and um, indicate this is also applied up gradient. And I'm, I'm intentionally choosing options that have a large setback just because it makes for more interesting uh, setback maps once we're finished. Now, if I wanted to, I could go back to my first one and preview the map. So now I can see here's my field boundary. Here's the residence close by. Here's what a 200-foot setback looks like relative to those two uh, sensitive water features. So I could do that for any one of these. Here's the effect of that drinking well on uh, my setback. It's got a 200-foot radius around where I dropped that point. And then we can do do the same thing for our grassed waterway. So a 200 foot setback from the waterway. Okay, so now we can finish this. And the neat thing is that now we can preview the way this is going to look. And notice the task is called fields, setbacks, and soils. But because we're fully integrated with the Soil Data Mart uh, web service, we don't have to do anything more to document our soil types the system does all the work. All we have to do is click on preview. I think I had something in the way there. All right, we might come back to that later if we have time. Let me go ahead and show you 
the rest of the process for fetching field boundaries from uh, from field view in this case. So these are all the boundaries that were in that account. And as you saw, all I had to do was log into field view. And within a few seconds, we had an exact match of every field boundary in that system. So we can just click on save. And now in addition to all of the uh, Ohio field boundaries that I uploaded in shapefile format, in just a few seconds, we'll have uh, uh, an exact match of every Indiana-based field boundary as well from our family's farm. The last thing I wanted to mention before I'm out of time are these uh, web-based resources. Uh, the first one, the user manual, is available on purduemmp.myfarms.com. Here's a look at what that uh, consists of. You can click on this button to create your own MyFarms account for free uh, anytime you want to. And uh, you can do everything I've shown you using your own account in MyFarms. So no matter what state you're in, uh, Ohio or otherwise, you have the ability to create setback maps according to NRCS standards. And so I would encourage you to make, uh, make good use of that tool. And of course, our team is always standing by to help. If you want to send us an email at mmpsupport at myfarms.com or give us a call. Okay, with that, I'm going to hand it off to Rick. Thanks, everyone.